Okay, so today we are going to talk a little bit about impulse control. I don't think I've shown this, uh, the work I was doing earlier with Bindi and her impulse control, but we've really been working on this since almost day one, not really, but like maybe a month into her training, we've been working on impulse control. So the reason Bindi's on the table right now is she saw I had food in my hand and she decided, well, I better start doing funny little things and hope he rewards me for it. <laughs> so she actually jumped up here totally on her own. And I wanted to put it all together and to show the different levels of impulse control that I teach a puppy from the beginning and then increase the difficulty as they mature. So at the beginning, the very first impulse I teach the dog to control is their desire to eat. So the first thing you want the dog to, to learn is to control itself um, through food. So she's all anxious to eat this, and I'll tell her, Bindi, drop. And we'll put food right in front of her, almost out of reach, almost in, within reach. She can almost reach that, but she knows she has to wait. And so you see she's sitting there. She kind of has a funny look on her face because she's like, man, I want to eat the food. Look, the, the drool's literally dripping out of her mouth. She's so anxious to eat, she's dripping with saliva there. But she's not moving because she knows I won't let her have the food. Now, the way we teach this isn't with violence or compulsion or anything. It's a simple, hey, if you try and eat that, I'm gonna take it away from you. So let's say we're in the beginning stages, which really I wish I would have shown better. Ah, ah, ah. Which I wish I would have shown better, but I didn't. Pretty much what I did before is if she tried to eat it like that, I would have said, ah, ah, and covered it and not physically prevented her from eating it. And then when she waited, I would let her have it. So there was no punishment involved as far as getting after her any more in my voice. I mean, I guess I verbally said in a harsher tone, don't do that. But that was the, the only real punishment that she had. It was a simple, hey, if you try and eat this, I'm not going to allow you to. I'm going to cover it up. If you wait till I let you, I'm going to let you eat it. Okay. Okay. And now she knows, okay, I've been sitting good, so I get to eat it. Um, I did show a little clip where we did the doorway and I, t I taught that concept actually now that I think about it first with the doorway and later with food. So if she tries to come in, I just block her and in this case kind of gently push her back. There's no, no need to be rough, there's no need to be you know, overbearing, she's just a simple little puppy. If you wait until it becomes a bad habit and they're big and strong, you really have no other option but to be rough with them because they're just going to blow past you and they don't have any respect for you. But if you start at a young age, like this young, impressionable, small, little wobbly puppy, you can be very gentle. Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. Wait. Wait. You can be very gentle and careful with them. Okay. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Yeah, puppy. And you see, she could see this food and just sit there and literally drool over it and she won't move because she learned as a little puppy, anytime she tried to go for it when I said she couldn't, I would prevent her from eating it. Now she, she just knows, hey, if I chill and I wait, I will get what I want. I just need to be patient. So she's learning to control herself, control her impulses. And see, I can even kind of offer her the food and she knows she's got to kind of wait until I get it close enough. No. Okay and then she can eat it. Okay, that's a good girl. And so that's basic impulse control and she's, she's known this forever. This is nothing new at all. When you're introducing them to controlling prey drive, you wanna start with the easiest thing possible. So something that they're interested in, but they're not completely obsessed with. And then you slowly build up to their, their highest desire, whatever that happens to be for that particular dog. But you start with something low, like maybe a ball. If they're interested in balls, you teach them to sit and wait while you throw a ball. Well, with Bindi's case, her desire to chase a ball is, is kind of minimal. I could start there, but it's really so low that I don't know that it's worth even starting there. I did discover, though, she really enjoys chasing water. So, I started teaching her self-control when I get the water out. Come on, silly girl. You don't need to sit up there. Come on, Bindi. You're so silly. How come you sit up there? You're such a good girl trying to guess what I want. Oh, you're such a good girl trying to guess what I want. Oh, that's a good puppy. Okay. Drop. 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 Bindi, drop. 
Drop. Okay. Drop. 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 So she's getting no water right now because she's not sitting. Drop. Bindi, drop. Okay. And the minute she sat, I rewarded her with the water. Drop. 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 Bindi, drop. Okay. And it's important to give the okay because you don't want her to have the original, the um, habit of getting up just because the water moves. Drop. Drop. Okay. So she butt hits the ground, she gets a reward. So when you're doing these self-control exercises, you first start with rewarding them for the activity. So you don't work on duration initially. You want them to basically realize, hey, if I sit, if I put my butt on the ground for just a second, I'm gonna get rewarded with what I want. In this case, chasing the water. Like I said, it could be a ball, throwing the ball when they sit. It could be um, a tug toy, you can let them tug when they sit. It could be a, a flirt pole. Um, where they get to chase a raccoon tail or whatever at the end of a string uh, as soon as they sit. But whatever the, the thing is that you're using to uh, train the dog the concept of, of self-control, the first step is just reward them for the action. I always give the okay. I don't just let them sit and then get up on their own. So you sit, okay, get it. Sit, okay, get it. Sit, okay, get it. It's just a, a pause of them sitting with their butt on the ground so that they learn, hey, if I sit, I'll get the reward. And while they're not sitting, you know, while you're waiting and they're anticipating and standing there shaking all excited to get the ball or the, the toy or whatever it is, you just wait, hey, sit, sit, sit. And you might need to physically go over there and help them sit because they're just too hyped up to think. But they'll learn, hey, as soon as my butt hits the ground, boom, I get whatever it is I want. And so they'll start to sit fast. Once they're sitting fast and you've got that consistently happen, happening then you start working on duration okay now you're sitting immediately great let's make you pause for two seconds then three seconds then five seconds then ten seconds until finally you know they're sitting there for long periods of time while you're teasing them so one thing to remember Bindi is uh, not even seven months old now she's like a little over six and a half months so when dogs are this old especially if it's a larger breed which Bindi's not but but especially larger breeds you need to be careful with overworking them uh, she's a little puppy. Those exercises that we're doing should be really short and not done too often because you want to be careful not to hurt her joints or her ligaments and things like that. Um, some guys go to the extreme when they're working with sight hounds that are such a fast, fast breed and usually bigger breed. They go to the extreme of not doing anything like this. I think that's a little extreme. Maybe it warrants it with a really fragile, really powerful, fast dog like a greyhound. But um, in my opinion, you could do activities like this. You just need to uh, keep it few and far between. Keep the duration short and don't do it too often or else you could possibly overwork your puppy. So just the thing to throw out there. We don't do this every single day and we don't do it for very long. It's quick, to the point, and we're done. Oh, we got the whole family now. Hey. So yeah, anyway, just wanted to throw that out there as Bindi is a pretty young puppy and we're doing a pretty strenuous activity. Those hard stops and starts are pretty strenuous, so you don't want to overdo it, especially, like I said, if you have a large breed or a particularly fast breed like a Greyhound. Daddy, this is a nice day to be, be outside with family. It is. It's a very nice day, huh? <laughs> Oh, what? Hammocks? Yeah, the hammocks. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with YouTube censorship. They've got some serious censorship issues going on in YouTube, and their policies are constantly changing. So I created the Mink Man's Exclusive Club, where I can share these exclusive videos, as well as give you guys a more behind-the-scenes look at our lives and how we train our animals. 
In YouTube, you guys see one or two videos a week, whereas I'm typically posting anywhere from three to six videos a week on my Mink Man's exclusive club. Now, this club is more than just videos. People can ask me questions directly. They could even send me private messages. I can also share interesting stories that maybe I didn't capture on video. I can share interesting statistics on my different mink or dogs and really just give you guys an inside look on what we do and on my animals' lives. I really appreciate you following me here on YouTube, but if you want to get a behind the scenes look and be able to watch these exclusive videos that YouTube censors out, you'll need to join us on Mink Man's exclusive club.